Yo boy, it's another mic review. Also, disclaimer, this mic was sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear about this mic is my own personal opinion. So that, with that, that, that said, let's get to the review. The microphone we're looking at today is the Boya BYPM500 USB microphone, which is a condenser microphone. And judging by the back specs, it's probably designed to go against the Blue Yeti Nano. Out the box, the microphone is well protected in foam blocks, which contains the microphone, as well as a USB-C to USB-C cable, a USB-A to USB-C cable, a warranty card, a manual, and some stickers. Behold the microphone itself, it's mostly made of metal with a bit of plastic here and there. The stand itself is made of plastic with a metal base to keep it stable on your table. Like many other microphones in its class, it's able to be folded up to a more compact form in case you ever need to sort somewhere. The microphone can be removed from its stand and thank goodness it uses the rubber grommets that hold the microphone in place even after the screws have been removed, allowing it for it to be easy in and easy out. The inputs on the microphone can be found at the bottom where it's powered by USB-C to your computer, thank goodness, and it has a headphone jack in case you want to monitor your voice. There's also a mounting hole in case you want to put it onto a boom arm or a stand, which I was also conveniently sent by Boya, which is their BYBA30 boom arm, in which you'll get a boom arm, table mount, size adapter in case your microphone uses a different size mount, a warranty card, a manual, and some stickers. I'm gonna keep this bit short as we gotta get back to the microphone. The stand itself is very solid, being made of metal and then plastic. The arm itself is also very nice, being mostly made of metal and plastic, with knobs at each joint for adjustment. This boom arm doesn't use springs, so where you set it is where it'll stay, turning only at the base. It at least has very nice cable management, as you have a raceway that goes down the entire arm, where you can tuck the cable under these clips, allowing for a very nice, clean, minimal design, which I'll show you guys set up with the microphone later. So let's get through all the stuff with the mic first. When the microphone is plugged in, blue LEDs will turn on. On top, there is a knob, which is a multi multi-functional button as well, and on the bottom is a button to change your polar pattern. The knob on top can be used to adjust the volume of your headphone input if you have headphones plugged in, as well as your gain. Currently the LED is blue, meaning we're adjusting our headphone volume. If you press and hold the knob for a few seconds, it'll turn purple, indicating we can now adjust the gain of the microphone. I should note that due to the multi-functional design of this knob, this also means the knob will only spin indefinitely, so that would mean that the only way you can hear how high the gain is, is by listening to the audio you're recording. Same goes for your headphone volume, but that's that's pretty much normal. As for muting the mic, just press down once on the knob. It should turn red, as you can see here. Okay, so I've actually been recording a lot of the review audio from this microphone already, so you guys already have a pretty good idea of how it sounds. And for the gain, I've pre-adjusted it, so, you know, I had to hold the button down until it turns purple. Give it a second. Right here, and, you know, it'll turn purple, and I will adjust the gain so I can make it go up, and it'll, like, capture a bit more, or make it go down a bit. And how high the gain is, you can only know by listening, so, you know, that's something I don't like about it, but... Once you've set it, typically you don't change it, so that's not too much of a problem. But, you know, that all being said, let's get into um, some testing. So, I'm going to set this back to its regular form. That way I don't mess with the gain while I'm recording it. So, we're currently in a cardioid polar pattern, and I'm at a distance of about, about I'm going to say like two feet, where I would usually have it if I'm talking on Discord or just, you know, doing a video chat, or maybe I'm streaming on Twitch. Shin the plug link in the description. Anyway, so this is a cardioid polar pattern. I'm from the front currently right now. I'm gonna move my Audacity tab over here so I can have like a little place to type in. So this is me from the front. And if I move back about three feet away, this is how it's gonna capture me at the gain levels I've currently set. Moving back up, this is back to normal in the front. I'm going to turn the mic to the side. Now this is how it's gonna sound from the side. From the back to see how much it cancels out from this distance. From the side again, and back to the front and onto the table. Considering the microphone is slightly in front, I'm gonna start clicking as I would do if I am playing a game or something like that to see if it captures the sound of my mouse. Now I'm gonna type, see if it captures any of that at all. And that is how it's going to sound with the cardioid polar pattern. Okay, now I've set the microphone to omnidirectional, which means it'll capture sound all around it, no matter where I'm at, quite evenly. So this is the distance I'm at from earlier, about two to feet-ish. And I'm going to move back to see how well it captures my voice and if it sounds any different. Now I'm going to move back up, and this is how I'm going to sound. I'm hoping it doesn't capture any echoes from the back. Someone just messaged me. Excuse me about that, and now I'm gonna pick up the microphone and let's talk around it to see if it can capture my voice from the side evenly. And then we're gonna move to the back of the microphone, back around to the other side, and now we're back into the front of the microphone. I'm gonna put it down. Okay, now I'm gonna start clicking around as if I'm just doing work or whatever, and it's, you know, just to see if it'll capture the sound of it from the side. Now I'm gonna start typing to see if it captures a lot of that noise. 
and that's how it's going to sound in omnidirectional. All right, now just because I can, I'm going to put it onto the the arm it gave me because might as well. All right, now I got the microphone set up on the boom arm, and it's a static boom arm, so there's no like spring in it to help it like collapse and whatnot. Whatever position you set it at is the position it'll stay at until unless you like loosen the joints here and here and even over here if you want to, to adjust it, but you will have to retighten it to have it stay. Otherwise, it's just going to drop. Once it's there, the only point of rotation you get is going to be at the base here. So it'll essentially just kind of flip around, which is ideal if you just need those positions. Say you're working and you're going to stream, you flip it over here. And of course, it would actually be you know facing the proper way. You're done with your work. You're done with your streaming. You're done with your chatting. You're done with whatever. You're done with your work. You just flip it out. That's pretty much it. It's out of your way. But, you know, this is more ideal if there's a wall on this side. If there's like a walkway and people crash into this, then of course it's not ideal. So this style is very dependent on you, whether it's worth it to you. really depends on if you care for having a spring-loaded boom arm or not. Currently, um, there's not a price on it, so I can't even say if it's worth it. All right, scratch that. I just found it on AliExpress, and it cost almost $100, which makes it not worth it anymore because the blue compass is essentially also 100 bucks, but it also is spring-loaded, making it significantly more useful. So while the Boya boom arm did capture the look of the blue compass, it doesn't have the same functionality. For $100, I can't recommend the Boya boom arm at all, especially since you can also find boom arms with hidden springs for under $50. All right, so from the test, the Boya microphone is very competent. It's pretty good. And currently it is priced at $87.50. And the thing about this price and this um, this microphone itself is it's placing itself at a very competitive point. Because when it comes to the condenser microphones, especially USB condenser microphones, it's a very crowded market, very competitive market. And at $87.50, it goes very close in competition with Fifine's offerings, such as um, the uh, the Fifine K690. This microphone competes with the Yeti, where it has the same polar patterns, having up to four polar patterns, not just two, which this Boya microphone has. And the thing about the K690 is it's $84.99. It's $85, which is cheaper than this microphone. Not only does it have more polar patterns and is cheaper, it's made of completely out of metal. Every single bit is metal except for the knobs for the most part. Whereas on the Boya microphone, the body is a combination of plastic and metal. And even for the stand, there's like a bit of plastic, like. You know, just the base itself is metal and the stand it's plastic, whereas for this guy, because, well, I guess it's more simple, it's all metal, and the fact still remains it's big metal piece and it just feels more solid and better in your hand. The only downside being that it still uses mini USB, which I thought was kind of stupid to be honest. But point is, um, the value for this guy is a, it's a bit rough because it's more expensive than this microphone which outcompetes it completely. Now you can even go down further with Fifine's um, K678, which only comes in cardioid. It's kind of like the Boyo microphone and it kind of like a Blue Yeti Nano, only that it only has one polar pattern and that's it. But its performance matches very closely with the K690. It just just loses every polar pattern except for cardioid and for some people that's enough that being said because the boya microphone has two polar patterns i think a better price for it would be around 70 bucks because it would be somewhere in between this microphone and this microphone where this one's you know full blown out got all the capabilities and sound this one has just the sound less of the capabilities this guy has the sound and a bit more capability than this guy, but not quite as much as this guy. So 70, I think would be a sweet spot for the Boya microphone. And hopefully, you know, after this review, they'll, you know, they'll drop the price to 70 because I think that just would be very appropriate for it. And if they want to, because they want to undercut the other microphones, they can even go cheaper if they feel like it, especially since they use more plastic parts. I will leave a link in the description if you do want to buy this microphone. Hopefully when you click it, it will be differently priced. Whereas of right now, it is still 87.50, but we shall see. And that being said, that's pretty much all I have for today with this microphone. So if you do like this video do remember to hit that like button because it will help me out in this youtube space if you love the video do make sure to subscribe for more content and hit that bell for you know just to know when i'm posting next essentially that being said guys i will see you next time <laughs>